Flutterflow is amazing for building apps quickly, but if you want your app to feel truly professional, you can't stop at the basics. You have to polish and enhance the core features so users get that, wow, this feels like a real app experience. Flutterflow already gives us the tools and with the right patterns, you can push it much, much further. That's why I'm starting a brand new series called The Making of a Pro App. Over a series of videos, I'll walk you through powerful patterns that can instantly transform your project from good enough to pro level. Think about the features you've seen in your favorite apps, right? Things like flexible data suggestions to find cheaper options like airlines and booking sites, advanced animations and transitions, real-time search with autocomplete and typo tolerance and suggestions, Faceted filters with counts, like you see on Amazon. More like this recommendations. Interactive maps with search this area. And collaborative features like live presence or shared wish list. These are the kind of details that make an app truly stand out. And so in today's video, we're kicking it off with one of the most common pro-level techniques flexible date suggestions in search. You've seen this everywhere, booking hotels, flights, even event tickets. You search for one set of dates and the app immediately nudges you with alternatives that are cheaper or have more availability. By the end of the video, you'll know exactly how to add this feature to your Flutterflow app so it feels smarter and more user-friendly. Now, I'm sure you've seen this before. You're trying to book a hotel or maybe you're trying to book a flight or something else. And sometimes it tells you, hey, this property has no availability on these dates, but there are some other dates. But other times it may tell you, hey, if you book, you know, on these dates, it's going to be cheaper or, you know, on in two weeks from now or in two weeks from the date you're trying to book, it's going to be cheaper, right? This is fairly common on all kinds of sites, right? Booking, Airbnb, I know Google Flights does it all the time. And so in this video, I wanna show you exactly how you can do the same thing when building your own app with Flutterflow. And so here we have a demo app where users can uh, look for available accommodation, right? So hotels, uh, hostels, stuff like that. The first thing that I wanna show you is we have autocomplete, okay? So if I type something like uh, buy, Baiho, right? This is a neighborhood, right? So we have this Alto Studio, Baiho Historic. I can select that. And if I type this, for instance, I have this autocomplete there. Okay, so that, that functionality is there. But the big functionality is the suggestions, right? So if I click here, it's going to go ahead and search for different availabilities on that date. And this is what it tells me. Okay, so these are the hotels that are available. It's nicely sorted from, you know, the least expensive to the most expensive. But it also gives me suggestions. It tells me, hey, if you book three days before, right, three days earlier, right, you move your booking, the whole booking three days earlier. So instead of the 10th and the 13th, the 7th and the 10th, it's going to be 22% cheaper. So if I click here, I can switch my dates. It's going to do the search again. And now it's telling me that, look at this, it's, it's a lot cheaper, right? We, we have completely different numbers, right? You saw the numbers before right, 105 for this uh, cozy corner. But if I go back here, it's gonna be a lot cheaper. Okay, so now it's 68 per night, right? And it keeps giving me these recommendations depending on where I'm at, depending on, you know, what kind of hotels I'm looking for and especially the dates that I'm searching. And so here it tells me I can move it by one day, by two days, et cetera, et cetera. And so I can kind of play with this and see where, you know, on what dates it gives me the best, um, the, the best price, the best offer. Okay. And obviously you can change this UI because you're getting all of this in easy to parse format. You're getting all of this in JSON format. So you can kind of change the UI. You can do whatever you want. But the key here is in how you set all of this up. Okay. So let's go ahead and let me show you the overall architecture of how this works. Okay. So there's a, a couple of moving pieces here. The first thing is that we're using Superbase as the source of truth, okay? So if I go into my Superbase database, it's very, very simple, right? We have the listings table, 
that contains all the listings. We have the bookings that contains the bookings for a specific listing. And we also have the calendar, right? That specifies whether it's available, the price, stuff like that. So if I go here, for instance, right, we have the bookings, we have the calendar, and we have the listings. So everything starts from listings, right? So we have these listings here, right? We have 20 listings. We have the latitude, longitude, we have the capacity, we have the base price, we have the amenities, text, et cetera, et cetera. Next, we have the bookings, right? So this is when, when it's booked, right? So we have the listing ID, the booking ID, and when it's booked. So that, you know, we know that, you know, it's not available on these days, that specific listing. And if we take a look at the calendar table, we have a different view, right? We have a specific day and whether it's available and the price, okay? And all of this allows us to get the exact data to offer suggestions, okay? Now, the next thing that we need to do here is we need a fast indexer, right? We need a fast search engine, okay? And for that, I decided to use open search. So if you head over to opensearch.org, uh, you can learn more about this tool. And this is an amazing tool. It's open source. It's completely free. You can host it yourself. You can do whatever you want. But this gives you amazing uh, capability. So it gives you things like ma machine learning and AI, search, uh, analytics, you know, all kinds of interesting things, right? Lots and lots of features. And you can easily host this tool uh, everywhere, okay? So in my case, I decided to host it on Railway, okay? You don't need to host it on Railway, but it's very, very easy to host it on Railway. So for instance, all I need to do is I just go over here and I say, I want to create a new project. I go to template and I can just search for open search and you can, can just click here and it builds an instance for you, right? That, that is exactly what I did. And so if you go back here, I have this open search instance. And in my case, I have two kind of components. We have the dashboard and we have the actual uh, open search uh, instance here, okay? So if I go over here, I can click on this URL that's gonna open up my own instance here, right? This is the dashboard and it is connected, it is configured to be connected to that uh, to the actual instance. Okay, so here I can add data, I can manage, um, you know, the dashboard is not like, it's not the greatest dashboard, right? It's not like super base style dashboard. And that is because a lot of the kind of uh, manipulation, managing of your data, you're gonna be using via an API, okay? So I can add sample data here, right? This is sample data. But for working with your data, you're gonna be interacting via the API, right? So for instance, here's an API call to uh, get my data, right? Get all the searching stuff. And here I can see all my index, right? All the listings, everything that was in Superbase, okay? And so once we move our data from Superbase, which is the source of truth, right? Which is where our data is, is stored initially and modified and all that. And so once we move it to open search, uh, we get access to a lot of cool features, things like fast searching, aggregation, lots and lots of features that are either very difficult or almost impossible to do in Superbase, right? Because Superbase is, is a storage, right? it's a database. But for searching, you wanna be using something else that's specifically designed for searching. And so open search works really, really well for this specific use case. And so what we need to do is we initially, once we have the data here, we need to send it here via an API. And then uh, anytime you're modifying the data, you need to be syncing it with, with this tool here. Okay, and so once you have your data here, you can now easily access it, do all kinds of aggregations, a lot of cool stuff. Now, the actual uh, logic, the actual kind of magic, that is happening using this kind of architecture here, right? So first is the autocomplete API, right? That is handled by open search, right? So once you start typing something, it can provide suggestions. Now, the way that we have autocomplete configured here in Flutterflow is actually very, very simple, right? So if I go to this text field here, I have an unchange event, right? So anytime the user makes a change, uh, we send a request, okay? We wait, you know, some milliseconds. We don't want to be like sending a request once they type a letter. We want to like, you know, have them type a couple of letters and then wait to see if they're done and then send the request. And you can do that by selecting this field, clicking this, and if you scroll down, all the way down, you can actually enable autocomplete here, okay? Once you enable autocomplete here, 
you're going to have autocomplete properties here where you can open that up and you can display the autocomplete options. Okay. And so what happens is once the user starts typing something, we do an API call, right? You can see this over here, this autocomplete API call, and we get the data back and we update page state. And once we update page state, uh, this gets filled with these autocomplete results, right? These autocomplete options, okay? And so if we go to the, our APIs, you can see that we have an API call that does autocomplete, we're passing in the information, and we also have an API uh, call for search, okay? Where we're passing in the latitude, longitude, radius, guest, check-in, check-out, limit, all of that good stuff here, right? And for autocomplete, we're just passing the query and the limit, how many options, how many uh, suggestions do we wanna see? Now, you may have noticed that our API calls, they have the Superbase in them. And that is because we are using Superbase Edge functions as kind of proxies before we send to open search. And that is done for several reasons. The first reason is that it's for security, right? You don't want to just expose open search in your app, right? You want to have a Superbase function that connects to open search, right? And then you can, you can control the security on the Superbase side. But the mo but the bigger reason is that we can have the Superbase function format the request specifically for open search, right? So here in Flutterflow, it's very simple, right? Just passing the, 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 the queries and all that. But the real magic is inside these uh, Superbase functions, okay? And do not worry, I'm gonna be making available the whole project here to our amazing Patreon members. So if you're not yet a member, check out the link in the description because I'm gonna be making available this entire project so you can easily replicate it as well, okay? And so the idea is we're passing just regular parameters, but we have a Superbase function here, right? So if you go back to our uh, Superbase instance and you go over here, edge functions, functions, you can see that we have an indexer, we have search, we have autocomplete. You can ignore this one. That was just for updating pricing. The indexer is only used like initially or anytime the data gets updated, but search and autocomplete are the main functions, right? So if we go into autocomplete and we go into code, you can see that all it's doing is it's taking in the values and it's connecting to our open search URL. And we're not, we're not actually hard coding the passwords and none of that because those are environmental variables. And so the users never know about the open search URL, the password, the user, none of that, because that data is available only in, in the railway server instance. And so it's fairly secure, at least as secure as we can make it, because you don't wanna have all of these things exposed in your Flutterflow front end. You don't wanna, you don't want it, you know, to be here where you're just sending it here or, you know, like stuff that you have in, in Flutterflow, right? Because Flutterflow is going to run on the client and you don't want to, you know, this stuff to be exposed there. Okay. And so what this allows us to do is it allows us really, really nice integration with open search. And so we store our data in Superbase, we sync it to open search. And then when the user is interacting with the app, we can provide them with alternative dates uh the different you know more availabilities in fact although i'm only listing how much is it cheaper by our function also gives us the number of listings so if you're searching for a different date it can tell you oh there's you know twice as many listings available or there's you know twice as as, as uh fewer listings available right so we have that information there as well in fact if you go over here to our custom data types you can see this result type you can see suggestions and you can see that we have this delta price percentage that tells you you know if the if the if the price is more expensive or less exp expensive for the listings if you change your dates but we also get this extra listings right so we can tell the user hey check out these dates there's 50% more listings and it's it's 50% cheaper right so it's you know we t we give the user th those options right which which provides a much better user experience, okay? And so this is the kind of functionality that you wanna implement in your apps. You don't wanna just give them just plain searching. You wanna give them suggestions, right? Because you want your users to be happy. And that way they can actually complete their tasks, right? Because they can see, oh, this is expensive, but if I you know, uh, book for the following weekend, 
uh, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Okay. And all the big apps are, are already doing it. All the big sites are doing it. And so, like I said, in the beginning of the video, I'm going to be making a series where I'm going to be teaching you some super powerful, uh, super amazing app techniques that you need to have in your apps if you want to be taken seriously by your users and if you want to see more videos such as this one in this series then definitely hit the like subscribe to the channel and check out our amazing patreon community for all the resources mentioned in this video